Ok guys, let's think for a minute about what we've seen so far about validation. We've seen how to validate our Angular form. We've seen what are the properties we can check to see the status of each field. We've seen uh, pristine, we've seen invalid, dirty, touched, and so on. We've seen how to apply a specific CSS class based on the status of our validation. And we've seen how to use ng class. Well, there's something else we can do, and it will be thanks to the new ng messages directive, which was introduced since Angular 1.3. And the ng messages allows us to show to the user a specific message based on the rule that is breaking. So for example, if we have a field where we have multiple validation, like the name field, we have a, a field that is required, we have a minimum length of three characters and a maximum length of 50 characters. So instead of showing just one static message to the user that will tell him to enter an event name between three and 50 characters, it would be nice that when the field is empty, it will say, this field is required. When the field is only two characters long, we will show the, please enter an event name at least three characters long. And when the name is longer than 50 charts, we'll say something like the even name entered this too long. We didn't do that yet, right? So let's see how our ng messages works. The first thing we have to do is to include ng messages in our index.html. And to do so, I'm grabbing that from the Angular code base but you can also download the entire code on your system and have the local path. I'm grabbing the version 1.43 and the name of the script is angular-messages.js. We also need to inject this module, this dependency in our, in our main Angular application. Therefore, after ng-route, I'll add another dependency, which is exactly ng-messages. And the setup is done. So now let's go back to our input name. Let's get rid of this uh, hold message. We're going to add ng messages. So the way it works, it's just a directive, an attribute one, but we can use also the element directive. We'll use the attribute way for now. So it will be div ng dash messages. And what we need to enter as an expression is actually the following, had event form dot event name. And then we'll use an ng model property that we always have, which is dollar error. This property is an object that contains information around the validity of our model, specifically the validity of our input field. Inside our ng messages, we'll define the list of message that we want to display to the user. So the first one will be div ng message. Notice that I've been using the plural to define when the validation should trigger. So whenever we have an error on a specific field, and I'm using the singular to define each one of my messages. So the first one will be required and the message will be please, or better, the event name is required. The second one will be min length, in the same way that we define it in here. So ju just get rid of the ng dash and your text will be min length and required. Please enter an event name at least three chars long. Okay. I missed the knee. So I can copy these and we'll do the same for the max length. And we'll type the event name entered cannot be longer than 50 chars. Okay. So let's see what happens into our form. The first validation I'm seeing is the event name is required. 
and you already know how can I prevent the validation message from the display, right? I can simply add another rule and it will be add event form dot name, event name, dollar, dirty, and add event form, event name error. Nothing is being shown as soon as I type, please enter an event name at least three characters long. Let's keep typing, the validation disappears, and let's try to go 450 chars, the event name entered cannot be longer than 50 chars. So that's basically it. There is another ng messages feature that I would like to show you and this allows us to define a generic template of messages that we can use on our fields. Let's see immediately how to do that. Well, it's very easy. On top of our add event, we can define our template and that would be script type text slash ng template. Okay, we need to give it an ID and we'll call it error messages. And inside the script tags, we're going to define the default messages that we want to use in our form. So the first one will be div ng dash message required. This field is required. Remember, this is a generic message that we're going to use in our input fields. And then we'll also define in length. I will type too short. In the same way, we'll define max length. That will be too long. Okay, so let's see what happens now. But before doing that, we need to include those messages. And to do so, we're going to select this time our description field. We remove again the static validation and we'll copy the ng messages from the one we've done for our name. What we need to do is just to redefine it. So this time we'll check for the event description. event description as well. But instead of defining the single message, we'll use a directive which is ng-messages-include and takes as input the ID we define above. Therefore is error-messages. That should be sufficient and let's see what happens. So if I now click on the description field, I'll type one letter and I remove it so the status will be touched and there will be an error. This field is required, so the standard validation, the default template is being applied. We have no minimum length, so this is all we'll see. Also, keep in mind that even if you define a standard template, you can always override it. And this means that inst if instead of typing only ng message include, you'll type above div ng message required with my own message. This will overrule the default template, therefore my own message will be what the user will see. Again, my own message. So keep that in mind. That's very useful in my opinion because you can define your list of standard messages and use it where you need it, but you can also redefine the messages to be more specific to what you want to display to the user. This closes the chapter around the basic validation in Angular. Keep in mind that there is a more advanced way of dealing with validation and that's by defining that in your services or controllers. You can interact, for example, with an HTTP service that will return to you the status of the validation. The username is a very good example. When the user is typing his own username during a registration process, 
backend will check for the username in the database and if that username does exist it will return an error and we will show to the user a specific validation saying this username is already being picked and to do so you'll use the dollar set validity function in angular we're going to use that further on when it comes to advanced services we're going to move into the filter section now but before doing that why don't you do a small exercise as you might have seen, I didn't add the validation in each one of the fields, so why don't you do that? Anyways, I will attach the completed code in the upcoming uh, section. But I would prefer that you guys do that, so that you'll be sure that you don't have any questions. In case you have any, just get in touch and I'll be glad to help you.